next. We'll get a preview of this weekend's Justice Sunday 2. We'll talk to one of the organizers and a critic. Welcome back to Connected. I'm Ron Reagan. And I'm Monica Crowley. And in just two days, a controversial convergence of politics and religion is taking place in Nashville. The Family Research Council is holding Justice Sunday 2. Welcome to Justice Sunday 2. May God save this honorable court. A special presentation by the Family Research Council and focus on the family action. From two when was the last time you had the New York Times covering your Christian radio or television broadcast? How about U.S. News and World Report, Rolling Stone, Esquire Magazine, Time, The Washington Post, The L.A. Times, USA Today? How about ABC, CBS, NBC, PBS, MSNBC, The Today Show, The Early Show, and of course, the Fox News Channel? Joining us now is the president of the Family Research Council, Tony Perkins. And the I want to ask, uh, if I can, Tony, I want to go to you. Explain you know, so why should this matter to the average voter who has These not secular networks rarely, if ever, cover Christian programs. But they all cover the Justice Sunday simulcast events, the Family Research Council's special programming designed to inform and motivate people of faith across America. Welcome. It's our privilege to host this nationwide broadcast of Justice Sunday. Well, welcome to Justice Sunday, too. We're going to have an exciting evening. We're, we've been praying about this and planning this for a long time, and now it's finally here. Welcome to Justice Sunday 3. Proclaim liberty throughout the land. While that secular media coverage is important and even historic, it was the major Christian television and radio networks that brought the program to one of the largest nationwide Christian audiences ever. Several million people in homes and churches across America. Daystar Television Network, Christian Television Network, Cornerstone Television Network, Family Net, Faith Television Network, iLife TV, Sky Angel, TCT Network, Total Living Network, World Harvest Television, and even Trinity Broadcasting Network stood together to bring Justice Sunday to millions and often rebroadcast the program as well. And on Christian Radio, the Bot Radio Network, American Family Radio, and the Focus on the Family radio networks all carried the simulcast live. If under God and the pledge is found unconstitutional, does that mean they'll be taking in God we trust off of all our money? I'd like to know is why the Ten Commandments can be displayed in the Supreme Court building, but they can't be displayed in my own state capitol building. Altogether, Please more secular and Christian media covered Justice Sunday than any other Christian event in recent history. Why? Because Christians are waking up to the fact they can make a difference. Thank you so much. That they have a say in how America is governed. It's great to be here amongst friends. You know, I know a lot of people in the media are wondering, why are Catholics and evangelicals uh, getting together? I got news for you. Get used to it, all right? During every Family Research Council Battle for Marriage or Justice Sunday event, much is accomplished. We educate Christians about their religious heritage. And you have Columbus landing in the Western world having a prayer service. Now, just in those four paintings, and here we are in a public building. Those four paintings, if you look at them, we have a baptism, a Bible study, and two prayer meetings. And that's the four paintings that you see when you walk inside the rotunda. You also, on the other side, have a number of founding father pictures. Uh, right over my shoulder here is a, is a painting that was here when this building opened in 1824, the rotunda opened. These are the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence. Unknown to many today, 24 of those 56 signers of the Declaration were ministers of the gospel. We encourage citizens to contact their senators. Now, those of you watching on TV, now, most things you watch on TV you can't do at home, but this you can do at home, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call my senator, Senator Mary Landrew from Louisiana. Yes, this is Tony Perkins from Pride, Louisiana, and I was calling to let Ms. Landrew know that our family stands in strong defense of marriage, and we hope that she will vote this week to defend the institution of marriage. Okay. Sir, uh, thank you very much. We will make sure the senator knows how you feel. Okay, thank you. We frequently showcase pastors who are taking a stand in local communities. 
think Pastor Floyd went way over the line in violating uh, the Internal Revenue Service code. And I'm notifying my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today that I am here and reporting for duty. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to express my love and appreciation to Dr. Ronnie Floyd for taking the heat. In every event, we present messages from some of America's most respected religious and political leaders, regardless of political affiliation. Remember when our oppressed pilgrim forefathers came to this dangerous new world for, in their words, the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith? The stakes are just so high, and we cannot sit this one out, nor can we stand this one out, but we have to kneel this one out. You are the only ones that can dispel the darkness. You are the only ones that can enter into the heavenlies. But perhaps most importantly, we always encourage people of faith to pray. We fully realize that to be one nation under God means we must turn to God first and foremost. Is it not the Lord who directs the affairs of nations? We pray for the Congress, for 435 members of Congress. We pray for the members of the Supreme Court, for there are even some with whom we, we often battle, but ask that you would touch their hearts. Father, bring justice upon this nation and protect the children. And in raising my hands, I said, Eric, turn around. And I'm his older brother. Just and as you know, Sunday events are not partisan, Republicans and Democrats have come together for these gatherings. The faith in values message rings true for both parties when it comes to standing up for religious liberty. I believe that what God is doing today is calling for the black church to team with the white evangelical church and the Catholic church and people of moral conscience. And in this season, we need to begin to tell both parties, listen, it's our way or the highway. Praise the Lord. In fact, at the last Justice Sunday event held at Greater Exodus Baptist Church in Philadelphia, we saw Christians reaching across old racial and political divides to stand in unity on family, faith, and freedom. People of faith put the name of Jesus Christ above every other name and certainly above any political party affiliation. I got to tell you, my friends, hosting this a great event this year has been quite interesting. I've been called everything but a child of God. I've been called a sellout. I've been called an Uncle Tom. And the New York Times called me a maverick to the black church. When Christians stand up in large numbers and speak with one voice, it's a new story with historic significance and the Family Research Council simulcast events have been a centerpiece of that movement. I tell you what is so exciting to me. There are 10,000 people here tonight. That is just amazing. 10,000 people and uh, well over a million, I'm told, around uh, the country. And that gives me courage. Welcome to the Battle for Marriage, We Vote Values. It started during the 2004 elections that were decided by the newly coined values voters who let their voice be heard at the polls. FRC Action's Battle for Marriage simulcasts were there, helping to wake up the church and shut down the Senate switchboard with a flood of calls. Now, let me tell you something. You may not live in South Dakota, but you need to call Tom Daschle because... His number, 202-224-2321. As the Senate Minority Leader, he is holding the Democrats back from supporting this, so he needs to hear from every American. Today, marriage amendments have been approved in 19 states, and momentum is still building for the U.S. Senate to pass a federal marriage amendment. We need to hear from you. 
The battle for marriage has begun and you need to make your voices heard. <laughs>